ownership.
don't you, why don't you go ahead and start that then, and, uh, because our man that's going to present it, the bill, the one bill we have is not here yet. Oh, oh, that takes care of that. Yep, time to go. <laughs> Nap time, huh? Okay. Yeah. I don't, well, this is on. Can you hear me okay? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the legislature. I'm Lieutenant Diana Clarkson, and on behalf of the Commanding General and the more than 800 um, men and women of the State Defense Force, we appreciate the opportunity to be able to present to you this afternoon. Our goal here today is to acquaint you with who we are and how our organization helps meet the needs of the state of Georgia. Our members represent almost every county within the great state of Georgia, and we stand before you today as proud Americans and as proud Georgia residents. Before we begin our formal presentation, I would like to introduce you to the uh, members of the Georgia State Defense Force who are here with me today. We'll start with our Commanding General, Brigadier General Mike McGuinn. Sergeant Creed Crutchfield, I'm G3 in charge of communications within the Georgia State Defense Force and all of the technology that goes along with that. Good afternoon. My name is First Lieutenant J.C. McElroy. I'm in the IT platoon uh, with Support Command. Uh, I'm also a uh, controller uh, and small uh, par part owner of a small business, uh, Telecommunications Interconnected, DeKalb County. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Lieutenant Colonel uh, Lee Martin. I'm the Public Affairs Director, uh, Georgia State Defense Force. And in civilian environment, I'm a professor of psychology at Morrison University. And I also work uh, with a, uh, an insurance company and other nonprofits. Good afternoon. I am Eddie Williams. I'm a captain in the Georgia State Defense Force. I am the headquarters recruiting and retention officer. In uh, my civilian career, I am a professional speaker. And um, you have with us? Okay. Um, we'll now, um, I'll be followed by Clark Howard, um, who introduced himself, and we'll be presenting the formal portion of our presentation. local 
governmental authorities across the state of Georgia, and also to help and assist the National Guard. And the Georgia State Defense Forces actually, our roots are in the original militia before Georgia was a state and it was a colony. And Georgia soldiers fought as volunteers in wars all through our state's history. And in World War II, well, the Spanish-American War, we were in the But in World War II, was the height of involvement of the Georgia State Defense Force. And the name has morphed through the years. But our involvement during World War II was extensive because every able-bodied man and woman who could be was overseas in foreign theater. We had to protect the homeland. And so the Georgia State Defense Force was authorized for 6,000 troops, but I think ultimately ended up with close to 10,000 troops during World War II. After World War II, the purpose and goals of the State Defense Force uh, really kind of went into back war and was not really any uh, significant contributor to the state for quite a while after World War II. And started becoming a factor again in the late 80s and in more recent time, this is basically what the mission of the Georgia State Defense Force is, is to help the National Guard. And in fact, when National Guard units were deployed to Iraq, was that last year or the year before, our units were involved both in doing physicals of soldiers who were about to deploy, and also our JAG was involved in preparing wills and other legal documents for the National Guardsmen before they deployed overseas. So the National Guard just did not have enough resources for that mission, and that was a mission that we took on as the Georgia State Defense Force. Now, the Georgia State Defense Force is set up in brigades that are strategically placed around the state with the population of Metro Atlanta, as you know, being so large. We have two brigades, the first and the fifth, that serve principally North Georgia. And then the second, third, and fourth brigades are dispersed around the state. And we have a chaplain corps that was involved with the deployment of the National Guardsmen. We have a band, which has been very popular. And we have uh, very sophisticated medical units. The medical units are staffed by uh, doctors, nurses, EMTs, and they train extensively. And they are available for any of a number of disasters. We fortunately have not had any man-made disasters that we've had to deal with in Georgia, but we have certainly had uh, plenty of disasters such as, in a minute I'll talk about Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, and where we as a state were involved for assistance for the people from the two hurricanes. We get paid nothing. We're all volunteers. About 60% are former military, 40% are people who do not have prior military service. And our goal and role is very active right now because our National Guard is deployed overseas. So we, are actually, we actually have soldiers in a lot of the National Guard armories right now. We train once a month. We have annual training once a year. And our job is to be there when the National Guard can't be. We have uh, training in a lot of civil defense functions, and you'll see more about that in a second. Right now, we have 800 soldiers. The Adjutant General wants us at 1,056. And there are plans for us to go to 5,000 eventually. I don't know if there's a need for 5,000 of us. That's, I'm just a captain, I can't speak to that. <laughs> and you don't need to see me. But the purpose of what we do is rapid deployment, where a National Guard unit takes potentially weeks to activate. During Hurricane Katrina, we were called up and we were active at Dobbins in two and a half hours. That's not normal. And one of the things about us, because our average age is somewhere around 43 years old, is that we have people who've had life experience. They, uh, we have very highly educated people in the State Defense Force, 
and they come because they want to be there. Now, the, the limitations we face is one, the uniform that I'm wearing, those of you who know I am, you know how cheap I am. I had to pay for this. <laughs> anything we wear, anything we do, we have to pay for. Did you get it at Goodwill? No, I did not. <laughs> I got this at Fort Mac, and it killed me how much this cost. <laughs> Our deployments are very short, where National Guard might take two weeks or so to activate and then has a long tour of duty. Our tours are usually up to two weeks. So we are there for the short mission. They're there for the long mission. Uh, one problem we do have right now is this varies by state. There are roughly 28 states that have the equivalent of a state guard, like the Georgia State Defense Force. In Georgia, and I, I don't know if we're the only state this is true, there are very few, we do not have access to surplus military gear in Georgia. Now, Katrina was a mission that we were very much involved in. I don't know if you're aware, but at Dobbins, we had a very active uh, set up, coordinating with multiple state and local agencies and volunteers from charitable organizations like the Red Cross, with people coming in who were severely ill or injured from Hurricane Katrina. And we had our medical detachments working, and we had uh, Colonel Harvey, who, if I remember right, is out of Northside Hospital, running our operation there for Katrina. And I was very proud of what we did with Hurricanes Katrina and Rita because we had so many people who were in desperate shape. I've been to New Orleans three times since Katrina, and television does not capture the suffering of the people who were in the hurricanes. And when you see them face to face, as we did, what each of us felt who worked on that mission meant so much to us, and we were able to make such a difference for the people there. And, you know, I didn't get involved with the Georgia State Defense Force because of a hurricane. I got involved because I was responding to Al Qaeda. And I found a whole different mission with so many facets that are so neat. And what I'd like to do now is we have a very short film. To, it's actually a, kind of like a slideshow that'll give you more about how people got involved, what they do, why they got involved. It's about three minutes and 20 seconds. Hello, I'm Captain Eddie Williams, recruiting officer for the Georgia State Defense Force. Let me welcome and invite you to take a quick look inside of our training, our missions, and hear some testimonials. It is with great pride that I introduce you to the ultimate citizen soldier.
search and rescue missions. We're constantly honing our skills for search and rescue, whether that be for children or for uh, survivors from a catastrophe and so forth. We also do a lot of triage, a lot of flight operations, flight ops, uh, that type of thing. Basically, evacuation, uh, whether it be land-based or air-based. I want to help with Homeland Security. I want to help take care of my neighbors and friends while the National Guard isn't here. And when they come back. Something that uh, we all need to do, pay back what uh, uh, our nation's given us, what our family's given us, what our fathers have given us. It's, 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 uh, service is, is what we need to be about. My purpose for being here is to make a difference in others' lives. In other people. I mean, that's what it's all about. Making a difference. Wow. Well, it's a way I can give back to my country. I didn't think there was an option for me at my age to give back, but because of my nurse's training and the because of the fact that there's this organization, I could do something for my country and my state. or any questions you might have about the State Defense Force, and we're prepared to sign all of you up. <laughs> Wherever you live in the state of Georgia, we can put you to work. Remember, Chief Recruiter right here. Broad applications. Is there a state budget for this at all? I am the wrong person to ask. Remember, I'm we, just a captain. Yeah, we have been unfunded. Probably the most part than I have. All of us together. What was the question, sir? Um, the question was, uh, is there any state funding at all that you all receive? We have been receiving, uh, we have not been on the line item budget for quite a while. I understand that we have been receiving from a small amount from the Adjutant General's uh, operating funds for his office, which has been sufficient to buy shoulder patches and the brass and things of that nature. That's that, yeah. We no have been on funding. funds Sorry. and things of that nature, sure. Yeah, if I could respond to that. Um, there was a $5,000 item within the Department of Defense budget which, which covered various different things. There also limitations in state law that were not, not allowing us to essentially assign it to the state defense force. You guys fixed that last year, and we actually modified the law so that we could uh, accommodate signing items. The governor's budget is department's request. There is a $74,000 line item that we can start building with the new board for the, assembly, for the state defense force overall. And uh, that doesn't include anything but essentially an initial inventory of supplies, emergency equipment, and such for the training purposes where we used the guard in the past. Uh, the other side of that, if you, if you look at Katrina, these guys have 150 people there day and night for at least five days consecutively doing basically the hard work of moving folks off planes and everything else. And breaks that go by rubber gloves themselves with their own money. So what we're trying to do is essentially set up a controlled inventory system to assist in the training. I'll the question. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that I'm retired military. And uh, thank you I'm for your service, sir. Thank you. I'm impressed uh, with what I've seen. And I, I was totally unaware of this group. But how many people do you have in this unit? 800 and uh, about 842. Rough count is always with an all volunteer group you have coming and going. 842 is the best guess the general has last count, but we're supposed to be at 1,056. So we're 200 under strength. I think you're doing a great job. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's a particular concern to me, and I'm sure if you have us, it's fairly easy to recruit here in the major metropolitan area. We have exposure, we have the blessings of Captain Howard's radio for us. Our real shortages that worry me and concern me are in central and southwest Georgia. It's very thin and we have hardly any resources on the ground. It's a tough area to recruit. And of course, some of the costs of joining up are probably a deterrent also, but we're working on it. And I just, there we go. Again, I'm Representative Alan Freeman from Macon, Georgia, and just wanted to extend my appreciation 
um, to y'all for coming and, and speaking and, and uh, for what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. I know that I have uh, worked closely with the Middle Georgia group. Um, uh, they've helped us with some special event work down there and appreciated that, uh, that commitment to the community. But what you mean to Georgia, I think it's a real good service that you're doing and, and uh, would, would commend you to keep, keep up the good work and, and uh, hopefully we can find some funding. I think it's ridiculous that you have to uh, spend your own money to, to provide a service like that. But thank you for it. I'm real, real glad that y'all came. Uh, I won't uh, do like my my old general said. Don't uh, General Patton said, "Don't apologize for a sign of weakness." But uh, we are sorry that was such a bedlam going on here to get y'all on because we didn't know the debate was going to last all day over there. And as a, as the man said, we don't control that. But uh, I, since I've been chairman, uh, I've had several occasions. The general's been by to my office in several ones, and I was fortunate enough to meet Clark down at uh, Fort Stewart when he and I were down there on the Youth Challenge, which uh, is a very good program that the National Guard puts on. And uh, I've had several contacts with that. And uh, at this point, I'd uh, like you all to meet all of our uh, members, if you start down at the end, I think I'd say we, we are strong military. Several of us have served in. I was in World War II and uh, in the Army, and uh, several of us have been in the service. For you start down at the end, Mr. S Mr. Smith. Thomas Smith, uh, and I, ha I had a question a little later on, but uh, I guess is now the time. Do you want me to make it? Yeah, um, I want to thank you all f uh, for what you do for Georgia. And I was wondering, what can we do, like in our districts, to help you get into the school system, to get recruits and that kind of thing? Is there anything that we can do to promote that that, that you all would like to suggest to us? room from all walks of life. As Clark mentioned, the average age is 43, folks that have been around the block, because they've got backgrounds that can be used. But I'd be happy to share with you who the recruit person would be all throughout the state, or we can have a dialogue one-on-one. -on -one. I just want to suggest that the legislators might, uh, could, we could help promote you in our districts, your organization, and uh, I know I'd be glad to do it, and I'm sure all the members of this committee would, and probably most members of the House, uh, any way we can promote what you're doing. And again, thank you for what you do for Georgia. Some of them are short, some of them will be like, I think, 30 seconds uh, that can be put on uh, in, with, within the local media throughout, uh, throughout your district. And uh, this, is, this is a shortfall that uh, we have um, experienced uh, because, as uh, Captain Williams said, that, you know, because the, the larger uh, group of our military population or our member population is in the greater Atlanta area, North Georgia area, and so on, uh, it's very, very difficult with the, with the uh, uh, distance that exists in the lower part of the state, in the southwest and southeast and so on, to, uh, to recruit, uh, to have an active recruiting program. Captain Howard is an example, though. Um, this, uh, this past November, when we had our annual training at uh, Fort Stewart, um, he... Uh, work with uh, a radio, you, you may want to talk about oh, In that. Savannah, we, yeah. our annual training was at Fort Stewart in Hinesville, and 
So I am on the radio in Savannah, and so I did appearances with my radio affiliate there and did a breakfast to recruit people for the Georgia State Defense Force. And then I did stuff with, um, we do one or two television stations in Savannah. Two, two television two. stations in Savannah where I did appearances and was able to spread the word of the Georgia State Defense Force. I've got a big mouth, so <laughs> I use it wherever I can to, to help us out. So, so in your, in your, I'm sorry, sorry go ahead. Go ahead. So in your districts, um, uh, we could do this, especially Clark, uh, who has a, a great deal of visibility, not just in our area, but throughout the state. Uh, actually, we were at, when we were at uh, uh, Fort Stewart this year, uh, there was a, um, a group of young people there um, going through some, um, a correctional program. Uh, some of the, some of the uh, children who, uh, had had problems in their lives, and they were uh, placed in uh, on Fort Stewart to, you know, for some um, uh, uh, some disciplinary work and so on. They recognized Clark, and uh, and these these were kids. These were just, uh, and so that was down in that part of the state. And so there is, uh, so we use every resource that we possibly can. We have a lot of talent within our organization that we send out throughout the state. And we'd be very glad to set up with local um, uh, television stations, and radio stations, and newspapers, other areas of the media to, uh, to educate the, the population uh, of the state of Georgia about uh, what service the Georgia State Defense Force brings to its people. If we wanted to have a program, say, in a school, uh, one of our schools down, could, do y'all do that kind of thing, or a civic club, or yes, sir. Uh, who do we contact about getting, contact yes, you, yes. okay, thank you. Okay, my name is uh, Representative Bob Bryan, and I'm from Savannah. Uh, I'm a retired radio broadcaster, as well as retired military. In fact, I received the training in the military. Uh, I represent uh, the west portion of uh, Savannah, Chatham County, and Garden City area. And I'm familiar with uh, the Youth Challenge program. I think it's a great program. I miss it this year, so I miss you. But I do listen to you on radio. Glad you do. Thank All you. Right. I've already introduced myself, but uh, again, I'm Representative Alan Freeman from Middle Georgia, um, a prior service with the 48th Brigade. Thank you for your service. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Lackley. I represent Peachtree City. I served in the United States Navy 1959 to 63 active and two years inactive. Uh, I certainly and deeply appreciate the sacrifices that you make, and I'm sitting here wondering to myself, I'm a dual member of the VFW and the American Legion. As you know, those are mature people like yourselves. And I wonder what outreach efforts you may have made to those two organizations in the areas of the state where it's difficult to uh, find volunteers, because that's what you are, volunteering your time, expertise, and knowledge and to the betterment of our state. And finally, I'd say, where's the naval contingent? <laughs> <laughs> one of the states has a, has a Navy. Actually, Georgia was authorized at one time to have the naval. Uh, the Is it Ohio that has a Navy? There's no ocean in Atlanta. Yeah. There's none. Yeah. Well, there is in Savannah. <laughs> Savannah. Yeah. Lake I don't Lanier. think you want me patrolling the shore. Well, I, just. <laughs> But the, the on the Legion and on the uh, on the Legion and the VFW, we're working candidly, sir. We're working on contacting a lot of folks to try and make them aware of who we are. My answer to that is we're a work in progress. We're trying to get some some of them in. Our recruiter, our recruiter in Douglas County, is the, I forget the sergeant's name, but he has been very active in civic clubs in Douglas County, and in every organization that'll let him talk, he comes in and speaks looking for soldiers. So a lot of it, it, this is, the closest I can think of is viral marketing. You know, we are so passionate about our service that each of us has turned out to be a great recruiter for the Georgia State Defense Force because we believe in protecting our state and assisting our state citizens. And we go out and we tell the story every day. All of us here have jobs that we're not at right now because we believe enough in it that when you extended us the honor to be able to come and speak to you, we wanted to be here. I mean, that's passion. 
thank you. Uh, Representative Thomas, uh, would you speak into the mic? And, uh, Brian Thomas, I represent a portion of Gwinnett County, um, also a former Army officer, military intelligence. I appreciate y'all coming and educating us a little bit. If you can come and join us, we're ready for you. <laughs> my name is, uh, my name is Paul Jenkins. Jennings. Uh, I'm a representative from DeKalb County, North Lake and Tucker area, for those of you in the vicinity who would know where that is. Uh, I am a graduate of the Navy Supply School of Athens, Georgia, which is no longer with us, I'm sorry to say, uh, and spent uh, four years in the United States Navy. I'm uh, very proud of what you're doing. I'm a big supporter of anybody who wears our uniform uh, protecting us. <coughs> it's uh, sorry if emotion comes out, but uh, that's the way I feel about it. Uh, and I particularly uh, would like to see people in schools hear about what you folks are doing because I hear, unfortunately, about people who go to schools and say uh, schools, secondary schools and universities keep the military away. And that's the exact opposite approach to what makes this country great, that people do volunteer to go in the military uh, for each one of us here. Thank you for what you do. Thank you very much. Uh, we have uh, a couple of members not here, Representative Warren, Representative Hextall, due to our uh, change of plans and everything. I'd like to hear, hear from the staff now who uh, really help us keep this thing going. Congressman Westmoreland and uh, John, uh, Representative John Lunsford got me involved in the, uh, uh, the museum downtown. It's a national uh, patriotic museum, and they uh, looked at all my memorabilia and whatever, and uh, they said they're going to put it somewhere in the museum and also the Library of Congress there. Uh, but uh, it, uh, and, I, and then they roped me into being uh, on the advisory board down there, so I don't know what kind of help they can get out of that. But uh, it's, uh, as I say, it's a great pleasure having you all today because uh, we're all in the same boat here. I think all of us uh, love our country and love uh, what we can do for it through the armed services and uh, affiliates to the armed services. And as I say, I've had the pleasure of meeting a lot of you all. And I think I'm going to be out at Fort Mac with, with you all uh, uh, out there, if I can find my way out there. I was afraid to go back out there again. I might uh, take me in again, but uh, uh, but it's it, it is a pleasure. Is there anything else that y'all want to say? But we are going to have a we can take up one bill here. To, yes, sir. Thank you. If there's nothing else, I will. Uh, yes, sir, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, if we could find a way to get the speaker to add Clark to, as an ex-officio member to the appropriation, I'd have to find money for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, when, I, when I first... Because I never let you spend any money. It's really bad. Well, in case y'all don't know by now, uh, I when I met him, I said, uh, uh, your friend on uh, the radio the TV station up there, uh, who everybody knows, uh, said he's the nicest guy in town, and, and he said, oh, you know how Neil Borch goes on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's obvious he is, and we, we appreciate so much you coming. Thank you very much. You're welcome. The uh, next item on the agenda, if y'all want to stay... You, uh, we're going to take up uh, House Bill 984. Okay. Thank you.
because of the cameras or something? Mm -hmm. The lights? Yeah, I've got to turn those off. Oh, I think for the presentation. You know, we our VFW and American Legion board gives away about twenty thousand bucks a year for different things. So I'd like well, to see us give some. Well, they, they haven't talked about budget. They don't talk about budget. I'd let it run. Oh, I understand that. No, I'm talking about donations. Yeah. You know, I sir, I have guys in the club that if they could wear a uniform like that, they'd probably jump right in. Get you know, out some people. Right? Yeah. Georgia and a few others on the appropriation. I missed something. I, I left the banks and banking early because I didn't want to not be here. This is my primary. Well, it's, it's crazy. It's just, I tell you. Today was just a strange thing. It's, it's just crazy the way those people. It's a strange day. Well, we did that when we were in the minority. You and I did it. Remember? Sure we did. That's different. <laughs> Make sure these aren't live so they don't pick up the map. That's my go. Uh, the meeting will come to order again. Uh, uh, we recognize uh, Representative uh, Cohen to present uh, House Bill 984. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I appreciate you guys indulging me today. It's been a busy, crazy, chaotic day, and I appreciate you guys having me over here. Over here. I bring before you House Bill 984, and uh, I'd like to just real quickly, briefly share with you the genesis of this bill. Last summer, I was over doing a job in South Carolina, and I got a call from some constituents with uh, military families, from mil some mil military families in my district. And as I spoke with them, they were uh, lamenting the fact that they were having problems getting any uh, time with their children when they came home from deployment overseas at the, in the war. And I asked the lady when I was talking with her, I said, you know, are there other cases or is this isolated? And she started giving me uh, incidents down in Savannah, uh, all over the state of people who were having the same problems with their local school systems. And so I proceeded to call the school superintendent, Kathy Cox, and bring her into the uh, mix and tell her what was going on, what I heard. And then I gave her, she asked for names and numbers to do the investigations. And after investigating it, she found out we do have a serious problem. And I think the board went ahead and changed their rules and regs to basically ask the school boards to please allow them 10 days of excused absences uh, to be with their families when they come home for their R&R. &R. But apparently that uh, wasn't strong enough. So she came back to me and explained that we still had a problem. And that's the genesis of House Bill 984. Basically, it's a, as we always hear, it's a simple bill, but uh, and truthfully, it is a simple bill. It's basically telling our local school boards that these folks, when they come home, deserve time with their kids, and it requires them to give them 10 excused absences from school to be with their loved ones. And that's about as brief as I can be about it, and I ask for your favorable consideration. Uh, that wouldn't be unusual, I guess. I think we don't we give pages a uh, day uh, excuse absent to come up here and work for us. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, is any uh, any questions from any committee members? Uh oh. Yeah, Mr. Smith. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'm, can I bring one point to your attention? I thought we had ten in there. It's it's actually five. I apologize. Actually, we cut it in half. I didn't realize that was in the bill. Okay, I, and I apologize for that, but I wanted to bring that to your attention before we went further. All right. Now, if y'all want to amend it to 10, I'll go with that, too. <laughs> that would be up to the committee. But uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to say that I think uh, I, this is long. What he's doing is long overdue. I'm surprised we hadn't already done it. Uh, we do this, as you said, for pages. Uh, they can come up here. There's no limit on them. And we kind of, so there's nothing really new that we're doing it, but I can't think of anything time better spent than a child could spend with their mom or daddy before they were going into service. I just really can't think of a better time that they could spend or anything more for their education for life than doing that. And uh, are you ready for a motion now or do you want more discussion? I, 
I entertain a motion. I'd like to move we pass. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further comment, anybody? All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. <coughs> Opposed, like sign. Unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you, committee. You. Thank you. The, uh, is there anything else anybody wants to bring up? Any member? We stand adjourned. He's an interesting person, isn't he? Yeah, I met him down there. He had his full captain uniform on. He was kind of surprised to me. Mr. Yates. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, will you sign this? Yeah. Money over the years. Guard. Yeah. Uh, you want to ride together? <laughs>